Why do Christians worship on Sundays? This is a question that came up for me again this week, and I've uh, heard it before from folks, wondering why it is that Christians worship on Sunday. Now, this can be especially uh, puzzling because the scripture seems to indicate that uh, the day for worship and for rest is Saturday. This is, of course, based on the conclusion of the creation account in uh, Genesis 2, where it says, Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. And by the seventh day God had finished the work he had been doing. So on that day he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because on that day he rested from all the work of creation that he had accomplished. Now, God, according to Genesis 2, rested on the seventh day, and later, in the giving of the law, the people of God were commanded to keep the Sabbath, to remember it and keep it holy, doing no work on that day, which is identified as the seventh day. Exodus 20 states, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. In it you shall not do any work. Now, the seventh day is, if looking at a calendar of the week, of course, Saturday. And indeed, the word Saturday, as it is in many languages, derives from the Hebrew word Shabbat or Sabbath. And so, why would Christians who follow the Bible, why would they worship and oftentimes rest on Sunday the first day of the week. Well, this comes down to uh, the resurrection. And while many people believe that or think that the Sabbath has been transferred from the Sabbath day to the first day of the week, uh, Sunday, uh, it's actually not entirely the case. Rather, the Lord's Day, as it's come to be known, the day of the resurrection, has taken uh, even surpassing importance and reverence in the Christian life. And so the, day, the worship and the rest has centered around that first day, honoring the resurrection. We see this shift begin to take place even within the Bible itself. While the Sabbath is commanded in the law and it is particularly exhorted by the prophets, indeed they name in many places how God is uh, disappointed, angry with the people, for neglecting the Sabbath rest and uh, are punished uh, very explicitly for neglecting the Sabbath, among many other issues of disobedience, injustice, and so forth. Uh, in the New Testament, the first day of the week, the day of the resurrection, the Lord's Day, takes a greater and greater place. Uh, the Gospels are unanimous that Jesus was raised on the first day of the week. They all stated clearly and indeed other important occasions, uh, appearances of Jesus to the disciples uh, mostly take place on the first day of the week. Pentecost also falls on the first day of the week, the day when the Holy Spirit comes upon the disciples and empowers them to proclaim the good news. And so this first day of the week uh, becomes kind of the, the center day. It is the day of resurrection, of new life, of recreation and of the new covenant. And uh, finally, the, the revelation given to John at Patmos falls, as it says in Revelation 1.10, on the Lord's Day, which is Sunday, the first day of the week. We see some indications of this shift even in Paul's letters. In 1 Corinthians 16, he tells the people that when they come together on the first day of the week, that is when they give their collection for the, for the saints who are in need in Jerusalem. Uh, also in Acts 20, uh, he gathers together with his disciples to, to teach as they, as they gather together and break bread. And this happens on the first day of the week, the Lord's Day. This shift in attention from the Sabbath on Saturday to the Lord's Day on Sunday seems to be taking place within the New Testament itself. And in the early Christian writings thereafter, very clearly, it is the Lord's Day that takes prominence. In the Didache, an early second century document describing uh, church organization and church worship, there is an emphasis on the Lord's Day. It says this, But every Lord's Day, gather yourselves together and break bread. 
and give thanksgiving after having confessed your transgressions, that your sacrifice may be pure. It goes on uh, with no mention at all of keeping the Sabbath, but only of worshiping on the Lord's day. Uh, St. Ignatius of Antioch, uh, an early church father, writing also in the early second century, also wrote this, Those who live according to the old order of things have come to a new hope, no longer keeping the Sabbath, but the Lord's day, in which our life is blessed by him and by his death. And by the middle of the fourth century, a regional council of the church was able to announce this, Christians should not Judaize and should not be idle on the Sabbath, but should work on that day. They should, however, particularly reverence the Lord's day and, if possible, not work on it because they are Christians. So says Canon 29 of the Council of Laodicea. But the question remains, how, if God rested after creation and commanded that his people keep the Sabbath rest on the seventh day, how can Christians, in good conscience and rightly, worship instead on Sunday, the first day of the week. This comes from a re-understanding of the Sabbath uh, initiated by Jesus and further developed by Paul. Jesus makes clear that he is Lord of the Sabbath. He heals and does good works on the Sabbath. And when Jesus' disciples are passing along a grain field and pick grain to feed themselves on the Sabbath, which was prohibited, he teaches that man was not made for the Sabbath, but rather the Sabbath was made for man. And the fixing of the Sabbath rest on the seventh day seems to soften in a couple passages of Paul's letters, where it makes it, uh, there's a greater allowance on which day of the week Christians may uh, observe as a holy day and worship. He writes in Colossians 2, Therefore, let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food and drink or with regard to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. And he writes again in Romans 14, One man esteems one day as better than another, while another man esteems all days alike. Let everyone be fully convinced in his own mind. He who observes the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. He who eats, eats in honor of the Lord, since he gives thanks to God, while he who abstains, abstains in honor of the Lord and gives thanks to God. And there's indication in these passages that within the first couple decades after the resurrection, Christians were holding various days as holy and observing Sabbath rest on various days, Saturday or Sunday or perhaps other days. And Paul gives allowance to this saying that what is not critical is the day that is chosen for Sabbath worship and rest, but rather that all days are alike and let every person be convinced in their own conscience. And given this freedom suggested in Paul's letters and the importance of the events that took place on the Lord's Day, Christians over time uh, increasingly and uh, now pretty much worldwide all worship regularly on Sunday mornings even though there are some denominations and groups, most notably the Seventh-day Adventists, who do still hold to a Saturday or Sabbath worship and day of rest. And while it's often noted that while the moral principles in the law and especially in the Ten Commandments are all repeated in the New Testament, the one that is not explicitly recommanded is this of keeping the Sabbath. For many people distinguish in the law between the, the moral precepts and the ceremonial observations. And while the ceremonial observations have largely been dropped, those of festivals, dietary restrictions, sacrifice, and so forth, the moral teachings remain as guiding principles for Christian life. And the particular observance of the Sabbath and all its attendant activities have been regarded as largely dropped as they are none of which recommanded in the New Testament uh, to keep in detail as they were in the Old. And while Hebrews 4 states that there remains for people a Sabbath rest, and Christians are encouraged to take a day of rest and worship and recreation and prayer in the Lord, uh, nonetheless, the specific aspects of those have certainly been relaxed, and there is a great deal more freedom for Christians uh, as to the day and the manner in which that worship does take place. 
And so while I myself can heartily encourage individuals to observe a day of Sabbath rest, to enjoy it as a gift, and to set aside time for worship of God, for prayer, and for deepening one's faith life, Nonetheless, we can also take some encouragement from the scriptures that there is allowance and freedom in how and when that worship and rest does take place. For indeed, as Christ says, man was not made to honor the Sabbath, but rather the Sabbath was made for man. And so, wishing you a beautiful day of Sabbath worship and rest this week, and may God bless you today.